Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, Architect and One Elect, and today we're going to be looking at the Custo Query Language, or KQL as it's sometimes called. Hi guys, today we're going to be looking at Custo or KQL as it's sometimes called. And this is a query language that's used in big data workloads on Azure. We're going to be looking at it mainly through the lens of security, particularly around something like Azure Log Analytics, but it can also be used in the larger context of Azure if you're going to be using something like Azure Data Explorer. So today we're just going to kind of get an introduction to the language and then look at how you can use it to filter data from those sources. And next week we'll look at how you can use it to join tables and join workspaces and how you can create some visuals using the language. So like I said, KQL is a query language and it's a query language that is like other query languages. So you can use it to extract data from data sources. So KQL is primarily aimed at trying to get things from streaming types of data, such as logs and things like that. While SQL is more for remote database management systems and things like that. So there's going to be some crossover knowledge between the two. So if you understand SQL, then understanding KQL isn't going to be a problem for you. But if you've never been exposed to a query language, then it can also be a struggle to kind of figure out what exactly is going on. But in any case, it's fundamentally a query language. So if you're familiar with how query languages work, then this shouldn't be a big deal for you to pick up and use. But in any case, it's just learning how to use the syntax. Custo is, Nate itself is a play in words from Jacques Custo, who is a French deep water explorer. And because this supports exploring data, such as in Azure Data Explorer, it's a fitting name for that. And it's a query language that supports things like, as I mentioned, Azure Data Explorer, which is a cluster of computers that you can use for big data. So you can use it across multiple data sources and across multiple uh, storage units or nodes that it might have. And then you can query across workspaces as well within that context. And it's what Azure Log Analytics is based on as well as Azure Sentinel. So you will see custo expressions used in both of those products. So we're going to be looking at it mostly from the lens of log analytics for building the queries, but the query language doesn't really matter. It will apply to data explorer to log analytics as well as Azure Sentinel. So I'm here in an Azure log analytics workspace. Now this is the similar UI that you would see if you're using uh, data explorer, whether you're, you're using Sentinel or whatever, you're going to see something very similar to this. And the UI is pretty basic. So you have over here a list of the tables that you can have or functions. The tables are my sources of data. They're just basically columns and rows like you would expect in a table in a database. And these are not relational tables. They're just data tables. And so they are not related to one another. I can't do like foreign keys and stuff like that. I can do joins on th things, but there's no referential integrity that's enforced on these. It's just data. So if I wanted to get data in and out of these, I can uh, simply just select the table. And this is the base, most basic form of query you can do. If I want to do event and run a query, it's just going to pull back all of the records in events. So this would be essentially a star, select star from table in SQL. It's going to give you pretty much the same result right there. And so you can see here that I have a list of various pieces of data that are coming back in this particular event. Uh, table right here. So very easy to do there. Now, an event is but one uh, one of the kinds of tables that I have here. I've actually installed uh, a aggregator on or a log collector and a, on one of uh, three of my machines here in my office. I have it on a Linux box and two Windows boxes. So this is collecting data from a lot of different sources. And I'm also collecting syslog data, which I'm going to be using in some of my other queries for uh, some of the more advanced features that we can do in query. In any case, it's very easy to just get all the data in a table and just do a select and uh, based on the table name. Now, if I wanted to filter that, that's where I can start to apply some logic to this. So I can do where, and a where clause is basically just going to filter out rows based on some data in that row. So if I could do where, let's say computer equals equals, and let's say I want the value for this particular computer right here. And uh, this is going to pull back all the records for in the event table where the computer name is equal to this right here. And uh, of course, I get back about you know, 33,000 records. Or if I did you know something like contains, it's another popular uh, way. I could just do contains win and uh, probably should get similar results. Yeah, uh, because that's the only computer I'm collecting 
uh, data on that has win in the name. So win is the prefix for this particular one. So you can do other kinds of queries, uh, assuming that this event level uh, event level is numeric. Let's see if I can filter on that. Where event level um, is um, let's say greater than uh, or let's say less than let's say four. Uh, that would exclude four, so it would be three, two, and one. And so I can do numeric data as well. Uh, event level less than four, so I can see. And one is an error, two is a warning. So, you know, I got error and warning logs there if I did less than uh, two. And that's gonna give me just errors and uh, you know, 6, 600 errors, something's going on with a RAS client I see on my machine. Or I could just do, if I wanted to do equals equals one, I could do that. So very easy to filter data based on data type. Now you can, of course, you can do different kinds of filters with uh, different kinds of date, data particularly dates. Dates are, are particularly interesting because you know, dates have ranges and things like that. So you can use uh, date ranges for filtering data as well. So I'm gonna go over here and grab a prepared query that I have and paste it in. This is gonna be looking at my syslog data. And basically what this is looking at is, it's, uh, if I can hit for my query, it's gonna clean it up uh, for me. It's looking at my syslog data, which is this right here. And it's looking at where the event time is uh, greater than you know some date. So. I can uh, make this a little bit closer to where I'm at now. Uh, I can do 3.22 at, um, let's say, I don't know, let's say 5.55 a.m. And uh, so that's going to give me basically everything from this morning uh, inside of the syslog, which is going to be a lot of records because this thing gets a lot of data. And you can see there I'm just uh, grabbing a bunch of data from that particular data table. If I wanted to get something more current, I could probably just set this to, say, maybe 11 and uh, let's say 11.05 a.m. And let's see what that does. I said this is give me a smaller subset of this data, maybe still getting a lot of data. But in any case, the idea that I can use that to filter based on event times is, is allowing me to use a date format there. Another thing that I can do is we can use ranges. So that's what this does. So the between allows me to do ranges between say now and one minute ago. So that's what that dot dot does. This is a, you know, now minus one minute and now right now. So that's going to, I need to highlight the whole thing, run that again. It's basically everything for the last minute. I got 87 events in the last minute. So you can see that this is, this is constantly getting data from my firewall. So again, very easy to use there for selecting dates. Another thing that you can do is sort. So if I wanted to sort this data, I can do the uh, order order by. I can give it a field name. Let's say event time. I'm going to sort by the date. And then you put a pipe in front of that. And that's basically going to sort everything descending. So basically grab everything from the uh, last record and keep just counting backwards from there. So I can just keep going down backwards in time from that point on. Or if I can go ascending, it's going to grab the la the earliest record and uh, keep moving forward from there for whatever it might be. So that's within this that time frame though. So it's within the last minute or so. So again, I can sort of ascending, descending, and get just a, a suck, uh, filter uh, the data based on uh, the uh, where clause and then order it right there. So that's a very useful way to just get the latest data I want as well as be able to sort that data on the fly. And there's a, another thing that you can do with data. It's projecting data. Now projecting data is the ability to basically just select the columns you want in your data set. So um, if I wanted to get heartbeat, and this is just going to give me the computer and IP address. And again, this is just basically saying I'd only want two columns. And this is good for performance reasons. So you might rather than get every column in a data set, you just say I want the these two columns. And that's all I care about for this query. That'll make your queries run a lot faster if you do that. So using projections is uh, just a way of getting data and filtering it based on the column rather than on the um, uh, rather than on the uh, rows itself. So just allowing me to get a, a set of columns instead of just a set of rows without filtering the columns. So this is just grabbing me two data data uh, columns at the event time, the syslog message. And this is JSON data, which allows us to format it. But we'll look at what that looks like in a minute. So once I got the, uh, I can do projections. Another thing I can do with this is I can do calculated columns. So similar projections, what I can do is I can take a column and calculate data based on the, 
data that's inside of something. So if I wanted to create a calculation and clean this up a little bit, I can create use the extend keyword for that. So this is basically going to uh, use an existing value and apply calculation to it. In this case, I'm taking the counter value and dividing it by a billion. So I'm getting the total gigabytes, although, but this, this field is in my performance table and it's basically telling me how many bytes I've sent and, uh, or total bytes I've sent, yeah. And, uh, but it's giving me it in bytes and I want that in gigabytes. So I'm just gonna divide it by a billion. And so what I'm doing here is basically saying, give me um, time generated. I'm basically going to say where untangle where the, the computer name is Untangle, and I'm interested in the total bytes transmitted field and I'm on this Ethernet card. So, uh, and ordering by time generated. And so this should give me the total number of bytes, uh, it, but it divided by a billion, so it'd be roughly you know, gigabytes, and you highlight it to run it. And see here that I'm uh, sending data up to now, since whenever I turned this on, I've sent about a 400 and about 400 gigabytes worth of data out of my, uh, over my out of my firewall, um, that's including my outbound traffic and all of the uh, the logs I'm sending out. Everything I'm sending out of my my network here um, is going out of my firewall right there on that particular box. So that's just accounting for that since ever I started turning this on, however long ago that was. So not a crazy amount of data for a network, but still uh, that's a lot of uploaded data for maybe a home computer. Maybe not not a big deal for some smaller uh, net, uh, for larger networks. And they might do that in an hour or even a day. In any case, that's a easy way to calculate data. So another thing you can do with this is also get dynamic types. So dynamic types are useful for all kinds of things. Whenever you have data that's coming into your um, queries, into your data sources, that is stored in a format that is projected like JSON data, which is my case for my syslog. So if I take a look at my uh, syslog table here, and I look at this, uh, if I look at my syslog table and I look at the actual message that's coming in, let's just take a look at that and um, come back to this one in a minute. If I do uh, just get a look at my syslog table here and uh, let's just do take 10 and look at the, you know, uh, take the top 10 records here rather than get a whole bunch. I, I have the syslog uh, data field here. And um, if I open this up, it's going to uh, try to parse that for me into something that I can easily read. It's going to basically give me the key value pairs for that object that's embedded inside of that field. So I can actually convert this into something I can query against using dynamic types. So if I have uh, my data right here and I paste in a filter right here, what I want to do is I'm going to be taking that syslog message and uh, I want to be able to query against the, the data that's represented in this. And in this case, I have, I've got a query that's basically looking for anything where the event class contain is uh, contains this uh, as a firewall event and the uh, event was blocked. So uh, let's see if this actually returns anything. And uh, if not, I'll just take out a filter here. Nothing in the last 24 hours. Let's just take a let's take out this uh, this filter right here. Um, and um, for event uh, that blocked is true. And let's see if I can run that. And that is giving me an error uh, because I don't have something right here. And it's uh, back in, um, paste it back in and clean it up like this. I forgot the where clause, I think, and clean it up. And let's take out this where event class contains our event. And let's run that. I don't need the end. That would cause it to fail and try this again and let's see what i get back here okay it's turning back up quite a few events here so i got about 8,500 events and i have a bunch of events where if i look at the the syslog message i should see uh, where it has something blocked equal uh, set to true right here and so i see that it has uh, ip uh, intrusion prevention log events. So, uh, intrusion prevention system is blocking things uh, here. Um, firewall, I disabled it when it, uh, I think yesterday because I had a special port that's just a IP packet filter. But I have I, my intrusion prevention. This system is actually blocking things. So that's good to know that it's actually working and doing stuff. So good stuff. So that's how I'm able to use dynamic types. And one last thing before we wrap this up, and that's summarizing data. So this is uh, how you can use. Uh, Custo for creating 
uh, summaries of data. So if I wanted to do an aggregate data of, of, of aggregates, I can run something like this to get a aggregate of data. And so this is going to tell me how many records I have in my heartbeat table in the last 24 hours from my um, three boxes that I'm tracking. So I've got 140, uh, 1,288 check-ins from this box, uh, 1,400 from this box, and 1,400 from this box. So you can see there that I'm uh, checking in with a heartbeat every so often to get a paying back from those boxes so that I know they're healthy. So that's one way to do it. But you can also use aggregates um, as well, not just something that looks like this. So this is basically just going to give me the uh, processor utilization or a given box if I wanted to filter it based on this. Let me clear that up and format this query. So this is basically going to use the, uh, give me the processor average time over a uh, period of time. So basically I'm looking for where the performance table where the object name is processor, the field name, uh, counter name is the percent of processor time. I'm gonna summarize it by CPU average, by, by computer time, and then I'm gonna bend it up by 20, 10 minute increments. And then I'm going to order it by time generated and, and then computer. So if I do this, I should be able to get 10 minute increments of to show me the uh, average uh, CPU utilization um, over the, that 10 minute bit, uh, period. I want to change that to one minute intervals. I could uh, just change this to one and uh, it might look a little different, you know. Uh, and then if I wanted to do it for one hour increments, I could just do one hour increments like this um, time. And uh, this would give me averages for one hour. So you can see it's you know, skipping it based on hour. So again, you know, it gives me the ability to filter things like that. And they give me the, the CPU is average for all the boxes on, uh, for the hour over a uh, period of time for the last 24 hours since I'm using that. So that's a couple of different ways that you can use the custom clear query language to filter data. And so next time we're gonna be looking at how I can use this for joining data and how I can use it for creating things like uh, projections and then use that to uh, create visuals uh, for it. So again, a very brief introduction to the custom query language, but again, very easy to use. Once you get the hang of it and um, get used to the syntax, you can use it for uh, a lot of different things, especially for log aggregations across different devices or for big data analytics in a custom uh, cluster or other things like that. It's very useful for those kinds of tasks. So thanks for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Tech on Fire with Blaze. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.